the Salt Lake City Council meeting this evening. This is our final meeting of uh, 2017. Um, we began our council member our, our council meetings with uh, a pledge of allegiance. This evening we have Girl Scout Troop number 784 that has scouts from each of the city council districts. Um, they will lead us in the pledge of allegiance. Welcome. And it's tradition when we have scouts with us that we torture them a little bit and we ask them to take a minute and speak loudly into the microphone and tell us their name and where they live. Um, my name is Connie. I'm one of the leaders of Troop 784 and we have five of our eight Girl Scout members here. My name's Maya. Uh, I live in the uh, fourth district of South Salt Lake. I'm Rebecca. I live in District 6 of Salt Lake City. I'm Annie. I live in the Murray District of Salt Lake City. I'm Erica, and I live in District 3 of Salt Lake City. I'm Ainsley Moore, and I live in District 5 of Salt Lake City. And let me just say how impressed I am that you know what district you live in. And if you can line that up with council members here, you. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, give them a call and bend their ear uh, at any time on any issue. So thank you, Girl Scouts, very much. And before we begin our uh, official council meeting this evening, I'd like to just take a moment and recognize that uh, tonight is the first night of Hanukkah, and we wish everyone a very happy Hanukkah celebration. We appreciate uh, that you have taken the time out of your day to be with us uh, here at this meeting and to participate. Um, we have some guidelines as uh, participants of our meetings. Um, we ask you to be respectful of all people who are here. We pride ourselves on being a very welcoming city and a welcoming city council. So uh, as people might be making comments tonight uh, before you, uh, please avoid jeering or cheering uh, because we don't want anyone to feel like they're uncomfortable in this space. Uh, we uh, take great pride in this historic building and this historic room and in particular in Brigham. And so we ask you please to have respect in this space. Um, be careful on the furniture. It is truly historic furniture. It's older than pretty much anyone in here. Um, if you have a sign or you wish to make comments during public comment, please do not be disruptive and do, do not block other people and their view. Please do not approach the dais if you make comments. Our staff is here to help you, so later in our agenda we'll be having some public comment opportunities. Uh, staff members, if you'd raise your hands, they're on either side of the um, uh, room here and they are more than happy to help you. If you'd like to make comments, they'll help you fill out a comment card uh, so we can keep track of calling you to come up before us. Uh, we are now on to council uh, agenda item A3. The council will approve the formal meeting minutes of Tuesday, November 21st, 2017 and Tuesday, November 28th, 2017. So moved, Mr. Chair. We have a motion by council member Adams and a second by council member um, Luke, any discussion to that motion? Yeah, if I don't approve it, does that mean you stay? <laughs> you, I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I think I'm out of here anyway. Um, but um, thank you for the question. I'll clarify that with our attorney. Yeah, as you say, you can't keep me. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries, it's unanimous, thank you. Um, We are at item A4. This is our opportunity in tonight's agenda to uh, recognize outgoing council member 
Lisa Adams for her service in Salt Lake City District 7 and as the 2017 Redevelopment Agency Chair. Uh, first, I would like uh, to give some time up to Mayor Biskupski. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, well, I, I want to stand before you because I really honor you and the work you have done over the many years of service you have provided for our community. And together, we have made several very large changes in this city over the last couple years. We changed the course of how we serve our homeless population. We have a transit master plan that has been implemented or passed and will be implemented. We set our city on a course for 100% renewable energy by 2032. And tonight we'll formalize our first affordable housing plan in almost two decades. All very big things, tremendous accomplishments with your help and much appreciation on my behalf. There are specific things I will never forget, so I'll, I'll raise one for you, uh, Member Adams, Council Member Adams. Um, when we were over at the Ute Car Wash, and uh, a lot of work had gone into being able to tear down that nuisance building in Sugar House, and Council Member Adams showed up dressed as uh, Rosie the Riveter with her sleeves rolled up like she always does without really visually seeing it. But that is very emblematic of who Council Member Adams is. She is a roll your sleeves up and get things done lady. And so I will always remember that. And in your honor, um, my administration, we are um, going to make a donation uh, to the um, Sprague Library for its restoration in your honor. I know that that will be meaningful to you and um, something that also speaks to who you are and that is roll your sleeves up and that's what's happening at Sprague today. So thank you for your service. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Lisa, uh, it is my honor to have this opportunity to recognize you for your service to Salt Lake City. Um, but before I say any comments, um, we have a little video that we'd like to show you in your honor. This could be scary. The last to take the oath of office is Lisa Ramsey Adams, elected to represent District 7. I do solemnly affirm that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state. I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. Congratulations. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. So it was interesting in high school, I actually ran against Lisa for a very prestigious student body office. And what I didn't know, and what of course I underestimated, was just the amazing likability she has, her ability to get things done. And much like her city council campaign, she ran this brilliant campaign. Uh, she was very persuasive and uh, ultimately ended up winning the election, much to my dismay and being totally humbled. And it was really such a great experience because in that process I learned about her tenacity, um, her desire to not just have the office, but truly in the true sense of her as a public servant. She wanted to do things for our classmates. She felt very vested in, in doing great things. And where I was just like, okay, I think I'll run for this office, you know. So it, it was, a, it was a, um, an experience which emotionally I'm still trying to get over. I, I told her like a year ago, I might forgive you, maybe another 10 years for trouncing me in that election. I don't think I know a harder worker or a more passionate person than Lisa Ramsey Adams. She's amazing. She is an engaged person. She's willing to work super hard. She's passionate. Um, I just know she knows how to affect change and she wants her community to succeed. Honestly, I don't know somebody who's volunteered more in a community just to boost the community 
Then Lisa, and to have her in an official position, in a, in a place that she can uh, impact policy and change programs, is perfect for Lisa. It was a perfect fit for Lisa. Well, she's really smart. That's obvious. But there's also a personal side to her. For example, when I recently broke my arm, she called my husband and asked for the address and brought a plate of cookies that she baked that morning. That was a very thoughtful thing to do. And, and I think she cares. I mean, when she's always asking me what's going on with so-and-so or did I miss a point here and there? She's concerned that she's getting the full picture on things. Lisa isn't someone who sits around and complains. Lisa wants to jump in and get things done. So it was exciting for me to watch her step into that role and run with it. I sort of, I feel like that type of position is made for Lisa and she just ran with it. She is fearless. And yet on the other hand, she's open. She, she doesn't necessarily want to be right, but she wants to do the right thing. So to watch her work through this process and become familiar with it and grow with it and then just really launch out in advance things, it's just, it's been inspiring for me to watch her work. And you see that in every aspect of her life. She's just a believer in excellence. And, and so I love that. And again, bring together uh, a, a wide variety of people across the community. You know, she wants to do it well. It's not just about sort of punching in and saying, okay, well, we kind of did it. She really, you know, demanded that excellence. And I think she challenged us in ways that I didn't expect. Um, sort of took on, you know, ideas that we said, well, we think this works. And she was the one that would ask the hard questions. Why are we doing it this way? Can it be done a better way? You know, the things that really, I think, pushed us towards upping our game terms of delivering on our commitments to the public. And so I really appreciated that about her. And I think you've seen that her whole life and whatever she's done, be it uh, as a uh, city councilwoman, uh, as a lawyer, as a mother, now a grandmother, a devoted wife, uh, you know, very much engaged member of the community. She just truly invests in everything that she does and she makes sure that she does it very well. Finally, thank you to the voters of District 7 who have placed their trust in me. I pledge to give my best each day and to listen carefully before making any decision. I look forward to working with you and to serving you. Thank you so much. Lisa, um, you took your oath of office in 2014 to represent the residents of District 7. You served as chair of the RDA board and were key in the board's unprecedented allocation of $21 million for housing. Um, my first uh, opportunity to work with you is when you were vice chair when I was chair of the RDA board and, and I'm so impressed with where you took the RDA uh, after our leadership. Um, I've just been in, continually impressed with your commitment uh, to that um, division of the city. As RDA board chair, you oversaw the creation of new policies to guide the, uh, the board in major decisions, changes in the management and operations of the RDA, uh, the appropriation of $11.8 to acquire property for a new homeless resource center, the successful opening of the Eccles Theater and Regent Street and repairs to the Gallivan Center uh, for continued operations uh, uh, for our community events. Um, we have all seen uh, that you do not hesitate. You dive into the details of every request before us as a council. You leave no stone unturned on major proposals, including interviews of recommended department directors. Your four years on the council prove your persistence, attention to detail, and your thoughtfulness. 
You impressed me immensely with your ability to connect with residents in your district. When people are upset and sometimes even angry, you never hesitated to go right out and knock on their door and sit down and talk with them and connect with them in their homes. You quickly gained the support of your peers to serve two years as RDA chair. Once there, you wasted no time leading the way on a major accounting effort and budget restructuring. Cautiously evaluating and preserving the board's role, you were a vocal supporter of the board's $21 million allocation to expand affordable housing in Salt Lake City. Your lofty goals paired well with your commitment to your constituents. You viewed each resident in District 7 as your neighbor and showed them you cared by regularly meeting with community council members, even going door to door during your term to better understand the issues affecting people. Lisa, your contributions have laid the groundwork for years to come. To thank you for the devotion you showed in representing the city and District 7 represent, uh, residents, we give you a custom painting of the Salt Lake City County building featuring your little red Mini Cooper out front. <laughs> Council members, could I ask you all to join us with the mayor down in front of this as we present it to Lisa? Mr. Chair, did they do a limited print on that as well? I think you'll have to talk to the owner of that uh, piece of art. Um, I would like to invite Council Member Adams uh, to say a few words. Wow, thank you so much. First, I need to ask a question. Who's the artist so we can share that information? I looked at it. It said Bradley Clark. Bradley Clark. Okay, thank you. Wow, this is, um, you all know me well enough to know I'm not speechless very often, like never. Um, but how nice, wow, this is just so kind. I, I am really so moved by, that video was really fun. I had no idea I had sneaky friends who were in that and that, that really meant so much to me. And Stan, thank you for your kind, kind words. It just, um, I can't believe we're really at this point. So. I have a few remarks to share, and when I was asking about how long this is supposed to be, they said, well, the longest we've had is 45 minutes, <coughs> and I didn't think I'd go for the record. So, um, but I, I just wanna share some thoughts with you. A few weeks ago, my husband, John, tuned in to Channel 17 to see our meeting and see how it was going. I was chairing. When I got home, he teased me about how I kept saying, thank you, thank you very much at the end of each comment. He said that was my trademark phrase, but more about that in a moment. In keeping with that, however, I want to begin my remarks tonight by thanking some very remarkable people, and please bear with me while I give an individual shout out to those who serve our city and our city council members so very well. 
Anyone walking into our office is welcomed by the friendly faces of Linda Sanchez, Becky Dangerfield, Robin Hogan, and Tracy Fletcher. They have the mammoth task of scheduling all of us and our comings and our goings. They do it with skill and they do it with good humor. Jennifer Bruno does everything well, but is exceptional at crunching numbers. She helped me understand the ins and outs of city budgets and has been a lifesaver with my RDA work. My husband is forever in your debt, Jennifer, that I've gotten better at budgets. Ben Lutke knows his way around a spreadsheet like no other. You ask him to make it clear to you and he gives you a spreadsheet that you understand everything. He even does it color-coded. Nick Tarbett is our planning and zoning guru. If you need to know something, he's the go-to guy. Kira Luke can analyze an issue from every angle. Allison Rowland writes staff reports that lay out before us like a well-designed golf course. <clears throat> She's our, our golf course expert. <laughs> Russell Weeks has amazing institutional memory and is one of the smartest people I know. He quotes de Tocqueville in resolutions, for Pete's sake. Cindy Lou Trishman put this lovely event together tonight and is always willing to help out with the extras. Sam Owen has been a great addition to our liaison team and is incredibly astute. Amber Pearson knows what to do in an emergency and she laughs at my humor. Plus, she is my fellow ENFJ. And those, those in, this, in the council family know what that means. Lehua Weaver keeps us on task and does good wherever she goes. Jen Aramaki kindly helps us navigate HR and dog parks, plus never fails to have a warm smile for everyone. Amanda Lau makes our ideas come to life with her creativity. Jessica Horton, Peyton Daly, and Austin Kimmel each provide the spare pair of hands we often need. Bridget Williams and Priscilla Tuau are amazingly patient about helping those of us who have repeated technology difficulties and are just plain fun to be around. Sylvia Richards grants us her insight when it comes to grant requests. Neil Lindbergh brings his years of land use expertise to advise us on thorny issues. Dan Wiest and Molly Farmer do their best to inoculate us from the dreaded foot in mouth disease. They also make sure that we don't have spinach in our teeth before we speak to the media. With apologies to the other liaisons, Brian Fulmer is the best imaginable liaison. He anticipates what I will need and deals with surly phone calls and emails with politeness and grace. His is a calming influence and I cannot thank him sufficiently for all he's done to help me do my job well. Cindy, could I hire him away? No, okay. I thought it was worth asking. No thank you, thank you very much speech would be complete without thanking the people who love me no matter what. My sister and brother-in-law, Rochelle and Homer Warner, my brother and sister-in-law, Tom and Karma Ramsey, our four children, Abigail and Scott Wiest, viewing this from San Diego, Sarah and Andrew Adams, viewing this from New York City, Catherine Wallace, viewing from New York City, and Preston Wallace, who's able to be with us tonight, and Danielle and William Adams, who are also here. Plus, our brilliant and adorable grandchildren, cuter and smarter than everyone else, as I assure you, Andrew, Peter, Jane, Ella, and James. I would not be serving on the city council had it not been for some significant arm twisting by my exceptional husband, John. Finally, Thank you to my amazing mother, Rhoda Ramsey, who has been my example of community service, hard work, humor, and my biggest cheerleader for almost 60 years. Thank you to each of you. I love you truly, madly, deeply. And now, I turn to my colleagues. In four years, I've learned a great deal about James, Stan, Aaron, and Charlie, and I've managed to learn a fair amount about Andrew and Derek these last two years. Consequently, I have chosen a gift for each of you that I hope might be useful in work sessions or stand for you maybe in your other job. So James, why don't you go ahead and open yours. It's there in front of you. Surprise. James is always a gentleman and has become my dear friend. He was a remarkable chair during a very challenging year and I deeply value that service. After, I, as you see, it says, 
go big or go home. That was James' mantra when he was the chair. And James, we've all gone big, so I'm going home. <laughs> Thank you, James. <clears throat> Andrew, go ahead and you can open yours. I think of Andrew as our still waters run deep guy. He is wise and a thinker. He also has a delightful dry wit. He sends some of the best memes imaginable. He loves data. And I will always think of Andrew when asking for a way to measure the outcomes. His says, show me the measurables. Show me the re measurables. Thank you, Andrew. Stan has served with distinction over the past eight years, and we first became acquainted when I ran for city council in 2009, when he was running for the first time. I have appreciated serving as his vice chair on the RDA board. He understands the big picture and the value of looking at issues in the long term. He has always been kind to the Mormon Relief Society mom. He also makes me laugh. Reading his, enough said. Stan, you want to read it for us? <laughs> oh. My. Hell. <laughs> <clears throat> when he's astounded at things, that's what he says. Thank you, Stan. Derek has been my wingman in our RDA work. I have kids his age, for Pete's sake. And I love him like one of my own. I admire his passion for our city and his work. He brings energy and enthusiasm to everything he does. Leverage our money. <laughs> Keep on leveraging, Derek. Thank you. Aaron, James, and I were elected at the same time, and we have become good friends. The city council had not had two women serving in a very long time, so Aaron and I felt fortunate to have each other. Aaron is smart and quick. Anything she puts her mind to, she does well. The city, her studies, her kids. Okay, read us what it says. I love alleyways. <laughs> Keep loving those alleys, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Charlie is my neighbor and my friend. He has great skill in working with the legislature, something we here in the People's Republic of Salt Lake badly need. He also works to make sure our first responders can do their job well. He sends hilarious texts, and good luck with the new ADU ordinance. <laughs> Read us what it says. I don't love ADUs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Finally, Cindy. Anyone who is on the council staff for more than 10 minutes knows that Cindy is the reason the council office functions so well. She probably knows more about the workings of city government than anyone in this building. She consistently helps us to do our jobs well by providing us with an expert staff and keeping us on track. She's a good friend to all and cares about each one of us not just in our role as council members, but in our lives away from here. I want you to open that. <laughs> Put that where you can see it so you can remember that we are always striving to be nimble. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. In a world where there is such a paucity of integrity, it has been a privilege to work shoulder to shoulder with people of integrity. Even when we have disagreed, I always knew that each of you was working from a place of honesty and with the best of intentions. I will always cherish the time I've spent working with you, and I will miss you. I am grateful to have been entrusted with represented district, representing District 7. I've given it my best, and I will leave office feeling pleased with all that we have accomplished together. As I prepare to relinquish my seat, I want to ask you to remember the words of Samuel Johnson as you make plans for the next year. Quote, a decent provision for the poor is the true test of civilization. I leave that charge with you. I give you all my best, and thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I, I do want to tune into Channel 17 for work session and see these being utilized. So You'll have to stop by my office to see mine. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows that 
fits very well. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's truly been an honor to serve with you on this body. Uh, I would now like to turn the time over to our Vice Chair, Charlie Luke. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it is my true honor uh, to be able to recognize outgoing District, th District 3 Council Member and 2017 Council Chair, Stan Penfold. Um, before we begin the video, I do want to turn some time over to Mayor Biskupski uh, for a special presentation. Thank you. Um, I, I have a special memory with Council Member Penfold as well that I think also uh, describes who he is. Um, I had the privilege of standing with you when we opened the Salt Lake City Police Department Community Connection Center. And the center is up and running. It is um, up and running because you advocated for it. And I was skeptical about it at first, and I followed your lead. And I'm very glad I did because the results we are getting out of that building and the service we are providing to this community uh, really exemplifies who you are as an individual and as a leader. And so I will always cherish that memory and that opportunity that you created. And I will make sure that going forward, we are always looking out for the Community Connection Center on your behalf. Um, in recognition of your work on behalf of our city, uh, our office, myself, will, will be making a donation to Salt Lake City Host which is a partner of the Community Connection Center and uh, an organization they are a big supporter of. So congratulations and thank you for all your service. Mayor, thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Biskupski. I, I, I appreciate that you were skeptical and I uh, love that you have fully embraced it and um, have in, uh, your budget has been very supportive, so thank you. Uh, so before I begin my remarks about uh, Stan's amazing eight-year uh, tenure, uh, I do want to have us all direct our attention to the uh, screens for a video presentation. Next to take the oath of office is Stan Penfold, council member elect for District 3. I, Stan Penfold, do solemnly affirm that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state, and that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. We would invite uh, Council Member Penfold if he'll come forward and take his place at the diet. Stan really is a visionary leader, and that means that he thinks about the long term. He thinks about what will happen, what this community will look like in 10 years, 20 years, and lays a foundation for success that we will all benefit from for many, many years into the future. Well, Stan is kind of like a teddy bear, you know? He's kind of warm and cuddly, and um, he's easy to talk to. He's very approachable and very respectful of your views, your position on a particular thing. And he, he's, he rightly values the relationship and friendship above opinions. You know, your opinion you're entitled to, but you want to preserve that human to human contact. And I find him uh, perfectly suited for that, for working with people, um, uplifting people. Stan's a great guy. Stan is one of these uh, rare individuals who combines uh, being incredibly affable and likable, being really smart. Uh, and I think in all of my dealings with him, and it's only been confirmed since he's served now in the city council, uh, takes the, the community's interests to heart. And um, so I th thought, and it certainly has proven out, that he would be a terrific uh, member of the city council and, and servant of both his area, but also of the city. 
downtown Ostan, an incredible debt because the renaissance we're in right now is largely traced back to his leadership. He is a true public servant in the greatest sense of the word. He cares about this city, he cares about this community, he cares about downtown, and that's evidenced in everything that he does. All of us who get in this political fray and who, um, and who get involved in <clears throat> decisions of a community or city or, or in any legislative setting, uh, you know, we'll, we, we'll take positions and we'll, um, we'll advocate for those positions and work towards what we think is the best outcome. Stan has a way of being so likable that regardless of whether he takes a position that you agree with, you can't disagree with Stan the person. And over and over again, I've seen that play out with Stan. Uh, he gets along with everybody and everybody well, which is a great characteristic uh, in any of our lives, right? But Stan has such a good sense of humor and way about him that I think he disarms even people who don't agree with him. And everybody deserves to move on, and, but I hate to see him go. I think it's our loss. Uh, but I certainly wish him well in whatever he may do. I know he will always be a contributing, healing person in whatever sphere he finds himself. And that's a great thing. I love my neighborhood. I love this city. And it's such an honor for me to be here. Thank you all. Council Chair Penfold, Council Member Penfold, Stan, my friend, you took your oath of office in January 2010 and again in 2014. Uh, you've served as chair of both the council and the RDA board. You were formative in bringing Salt Lake City's bike share program to fruition. You were a key player and leader in the completion of major community assets, including uh, the public safety building, the Marmalade and Glendale Libraries, and the Eccles Theater. Stan, you finished your eight years in office serving as council chair this past year. And as we all know and have felt, it's been a very, very busy year, especially a very busy uh, final six months, uh, full of change and significant issues that have deeply affected our community. We have experienced the city grow in new ways. And thus, it is a very poignant year for you to end your service on. Compassion really has been the hallmark of your eight years on the city council. Uh, Compassion drove your proposal to start the first of its kind social work program in the Salt Lake City Police Department, uh, which continues to grow. Thank you. Uh, it was central to your work in helping initiate the Salt Lake, City, uh, Salt Lake City's Human Rights Commission and the renaming of Harvey Milk Boulevard. It was at the heart of your coffee chat series where you connected in person with your constituents to better hear and feel what they cared about. It was the motivation for your events or your efforts to bring community groups together and it was the basis for so many of your initiatives, decisions and relationships, including the way you considered impacts to local businesses and the environment. So Stan, uh, as we really thought a lot about what to uh, present you with to, to, that exemplifies the eight years of service. And as everything, as a symbol of everything that you've compassionately championed, we want to give you uh, this custom planter, uh, which has been made from a recycled green bike basket. <laughs> so, Stan. Uh, council members, mayor, if you can join us uh, down in front as, as staff presents Stan with his gift.
used to play that for me. All right, up here, by the way. Okay, so Stan makes his way back um, and gets a little bit comfortable. Uh, we'll invite uh, Stan to say a couple of comments. I don't have presents for you uh, like Lisa did, and I could never have imagined being so appropriate. So um, thank you, Lisa. Um, it was almost 30 years ago uh, that I got involved with the city as one of those crazy, riled up neighbors who was upset about traffic. Um, and uh, soon got connected to uh, my community council and uh, quickly uh, began providing services through the Office of Community Affairs, which was an office of Palmer de Paulus. And it is uh, with great fondness that I remember those early days um, working with Palmer, who is my true idol, um, and with all of the people who were so engaged at that time. I quickly learned that I had quite the affection for neighbors and um, their concerns and their willingness and ability to engage with city government. I had never imagined myself as a city neighborhood activist, but that's what I became. And I'm sure there are people, maybe even still here today, who uh, saw me as a thorn in their sides. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I really am. Especially coming from this place now. Um, one of the things that became clear to me in the process of serving, on the Salt Lake City Council is how much I admire um, the council staff, which Lisa, um, uh, I can only echo Lisa's comments because everything she said is absolutely accurate about the amazing council staff. They impress me daily, and Brian truly is the best liaison. So Chris and Amy, you're very fortunate. Uh, no offense to any other liaisons. Um, it's very much like saying, I, I'm fond of saying uh, when I'm uh, out speaking as council chair that the best district in Salt Lake City is the district you're standing in at the moment. So that would be District 4 uh, tonight, so thank you, Derek. Um, but I have a great fondness, um, I've grown to have a great fondness for all of the districts in Salt Lake City. Um, I'm, I'm sort of having this moment where uh, this video has uh, reminded me of a lot of things that I'm very proud of, but I think what I'm most proud of um, in this opportunity is the honor um, that the great residents of District 3 have given me for eight years to be their representative on this body, um, to be their voice um, in the city, to be their advocate for all things great in District 3, to be the champion of those issues, and to be the representative who works with an incredible group of colleagues um, and some amazing people who are just as dedicated to their own residents and their own neighborhoods 
but have this um, amazing ability to come together for the common good. Um, I truly believe that all government is local government. One of the great opportunities we have every formal meeting of the council is to accept public comment. And um, sometimes people ask me, because um, um, we can get a lot of public comment some evenings, um, what it's like. And it's been consistently um, an opportunity I look forward to. And as I said to my father, who um, is a Republican, by the way, I don't know how I happened. Um, but as I said to my father, who, who is uh, on complete uh, polar opposites of me politically, but can't help but be proud, so that's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> nowhere else do you get to um, take time on a Tuesday night drive to a location that's a government building, take two minutes and talk to your elected official about anything you want to talk about. And sometimes they are things that are relevant to the work we're doing as a council body, and sometimes they are things we can't do anything about. But that moment of standing and looking at your elected officials in the eye and sharing with them how you really feel, I think is one of the greatest opportunities we give our residents. And there's nowhere you can do that, anywhere in government, but right here, twice a month on Tuesday night. And I so thoroughly enjoy that opportunity to engage with people on that level. This is an incredible group. These last two years in particular have been so rewarding to me in working with this group of committed people who care deeply about our city and share those um, concerns and bring those to lively at times debates. But I have a lot of respect for everyone sitting here this evening. Um, I'm gonna miss you dearly. I have a favorite saying uh, that I use frequently um, and I truly believe, which is, I'm pulling up so I don't make, I make sure I get it right. It's a Margaret Mead quote that you'll be familiar with as soon as I say it. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. I want to extend my gratitude to my friends who are here tonight who were automatically, by, by friendship, a, an extension of my family here. And I'd just like to close by saying I love my neighborhood. I love the neighborhoods in Salt Lake City. I love Salt Lake City. And this has been the most incredible journey I could imagine. Thank you all so very much. Okay, Stan, so before I turn the uh, chair back over to you, I do want to uh, give uh, each of the council members an opportunity to say just a couple of things to uh, both Lisa and Stan. Um, and I'm gonna start. Um, so, you know, with Lisa, um, it's been great working with you. Um, it's been uh, wonderful, as Lisa said, we're, we're neighbors uh, just across 21st South, but 
uh, we're, we're still neighbors. We uh, receive a lot of the same um, concerns from, uh, from our constituents. And so it's, been, it's always great talking to you about uh, some of the different issues, and I will, I will miss those uh, text conversations. I'll miss the, the phone calls, and I hope that they don't stop. Um, I also want to say that I feel like I know uh, your family uh, almost as well as I know my family, because <laughs> every single discussion that we have about every single issue, there is some sort, some story that she will uh, talk about, either uh, her childhood, her, her parents, her, her siblings, her kids, it, it all relates. And, and so it's going to be real, we're going to have, our meetings are going to go so fast now, because we won't hear it about the Adams family uh, <laughs> during every single discussion we talk about. And, and, I, and, and I joke about it, but I, I really will miss it. It's been uh, it's, it's truly, a, it says a lot about your family, uh, but it really says a lot about you. So uh, thank you very much for that, Stan. Uh, it has been my true honor uh, to work uh, by your side this year uh, as, as your vice chair. Um, we, I feel like, like we have gotten to know each other extremely well over, over this year, and it has been uh, really one of the one of the joys of, of the six years that I've been on the council uh, getting to know you better uh, working with you and 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 just kind of figuring out how Stan's brain works um, because those of you who are who are friends with Stan and know Stan um, Stan you know I mentioned the compassionate um, thing Stan is truly one of the most compassionate people uh, that I've, I've had the honor to work with not just on the council but professionally uh, as well um, it's, it's, I've, I've learned a lot from you, I've learned a lot, um, and, and I, I will, you know, always uh, cherish uh, the year that, that we've had, uh, working closely together in the, in the time that I've worked with you uh, in the six years on the council. And in, in closing, the thing that I'm really going to miss the most about Stan and Lisa is the fact that as a 44-year-old person, I will now be the oldest. <laughs> council member uh, in the Salt Lake City Council, which in and of itself is rather remarkable and I, th I think says a lot about uh, Salt Lake City and a lot about, uh, about our future. Um, so hopefully I will be able to uh, take the elder reins from, uh, from both of you and, and do it as much of an honor as you did. So uh, again, uh, Lisa, Stan, thank you both so much. Absolutely. Lisa, you are smart, you are direct, you're extremely ethical, you are forthcoming. You always let me know if you were going to vote a different way than I thought you were, and I appreciate that. You are classy, a great dresser, by the way. She is so responsible and hardworking. You are truly a public servant and went above and beyond to hear the whole breadth of your district and their voices. You've always been open to listening, even when uh, it was hard to do so. And you are very good at asking hard questions. Sometimes you are brutally honest, but you are always graceful and you are gracious too. I will miss working with you and I um, have learned a lot from you as a friend and as a coworker, as a council person and as a member of this community. Uh, Stan, the lover of process, the patient hand on the council. You are prudent and creative. You are determined. You are galvanizing. You are an advocate of the arts and equality. You're brilliantly strategic. And you create opportunities to make incredible things happen. And lastly, you're an awful liar. <laughs> I'm grateful for that, too. <laughs> uh, I will miss you both on the council. And we have, um, you have brought such distinct character and qualities to the council that um, I'm, I've been 
scrapping over the last six months, year, to try to absorb those qualities and be able to continue um, emulating what you have both have done naturally and so well for so long. I, uh, I just want to say I'm a better person for knowing both of you, and I know this isn't the end of our friendship, and I hope it's not the end of our work together in this community. And thank you for your service. Dan, um, you are a dear friend and somebody who makes all of us laugh. You have the best sense of humor, and I will miss that in this body. Uh, Aaron already said it, but you are a deep lover of process, and that frustrates the hell out of me. <laughs> we have, um, I think you and I have tested each other more than anybody else. Um, for as much as we may agree on policy matters, um, I really appreciated the, uh, the debates and the tension and the coming together. We have come to respect one another, and I admire you so much. Thank you for all you've done. Lisa. Yeah, you can clap. Lisa. Um, I assumed incorrectly that when I first joined the council that you and I would be on the opposite side of many issues. And it's not true. We have worked so well together over the last two years. You serve with integrity and grit and charm. You ask all the tough questions, the questions that a lot of us are uncomfortable asking. You have a deep and true commitment to Salt Lake City it has been a great experience to serve alongside you and to learn from you. It's a great pleasure to um, serve in leadership on the Redevelopment Agency. Um, I'm so honored and grateful to call you a friend and a mentor. I will miss you. I know that um, you will be thinking of all of us from the slopes this January and uh, f from New York later next year. Um, I'm so proud to see you uh, continue on in service, and I know that you will um, serve the church really well, and I'm so excited to come visit you in New York. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. I think I'd like to pass, if that's all right. Um, when I was first elected two years ago, we went back to Washington, D.C., a few of us, for the National League of Cities Conference, and one night we had dinner in Georgetown, and it was um, a nice night, and I like to walk, so I was going to walk back to the hotel. It's about 40 minutes or so, and Lisa um, asked if, she liked, if I'd like to walk with her, and internally, as an, as an introvert, I said, not just no, but hell no. Um, because I, I'm a loner, I do my own thing, right? Um, talking to people isn't sort of what I do in my free time, um, despite what my wife likes to do. And Lisa walked with me, and it was one of the wonderful experiences of my um, two years so far. It, it was eye-opening. She shared a lot of um, opinions and information and history and thoughts and um, showed me the depth of what you can experience as a council person here. Um, she is uh, fundamentally sound in her beliefs in that she, is, she has fidelity to them and she's fierce. The, the lady is fierce um, despite the sort of classy veneer. <laughs> um, I appreciate that level of commitment to what she wants to accomplish. I also uh, um, deeply appreciate uh, watching her interact with her family and talk about her family in that stage that she's in now with grandchildren um, as somebody who's just starting out and has um, way too many more nights of sleeplessness um, with my infants. But I'm watching where she is at and trying to, to learn from that so that I can avoid mistakes now and also uh, come to a place of um, comfort 
with the principles that she has. So thank you very much, Lisa. Um, Stan, uh, as people call you teddy bear. I called you the big dog at one point, and I don't know how you took that, but it was meant as a sign of reverence towards you. Uh, Stan has a, a depth of um, institutional knowledge of the city uh, that is very, very profound. And it may come across in some of the process that Derek talked about, um, but it comes across a lot more in the ability to take history and contextualize it to current issues, um, to take the past and the present and meld them together. And that's part of the reason I think that he's so good with people is he just understands where you've been. He understands where he's been. Um, the struggles that the people have seen and what's led them to where they are now and their opinions or, or their stances. Um, I, I feel that I'm going to miss that already. Um, I can already feel that actually. And despite how old Charlie is, I'm not sure he's going to bring the same thing to the table. <laughs> uh, I, I have a profound respect for um, people who endure the trials of life and the struggles that come along with it and embrace it and love it and then share that with others in a very um, real way and can make uh, you and the city better. And every time that I've sat down in a coffee shop with Stan to, to hear about his ideas or to uh, talk to him about something, he always makes you feel like you're the most important person um, until somebody else walks by and he knows them as well and everybody knows Stan. Um, <laughs> But I've always come away with more information than I had before, things I had never heard, never knew. Um, and it's amazing the depth of information that you can glean from him just in short amounts of time. Um, your humanity um, endears you to people and endears you to me. So thank you again. They normally don't like to talk this long in formal meetings, so. Um, it would be a little weird if I said I'm going to stop right now, but uh, and just skip it. But I can't because uh, when we first, when I was first elected on the council, I'll never forget uh, Jill Remington Love and Carlton Christensen and Soren Simonson were all leaving, and I thought to myself, "Wow, look at those individuals and how qualified they are, and 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 what their abilities they have they've done. The council is going to be lacking." And and we we uh, got on the council, and you could just see Stan flourish, and Lisa flourish, and Charlie flourish, and Kyle and Luke, and you know, and, and then when Kyle and and, uh, and Luke left, I thought, oh boy, it's going to be a lot better now. I'm just kidding, Kyle. <laughs> I uh, I was like, there's some more institutional knowledge that's on its way out the door, but you know, with Derek and Andrew, it's it's completely filled, and you know, I just welcome. Uh, you know, Chris and Amy and, and their, their knowledge coming in, it's going to be a different view, but it's going to be a great view for the city. Um, Lisa is one of the classiest ladies I think I've ever met in my entire life. She's basically regal. Uh, she, uh, but I've learned that because of her mom. Um, her mom had a huge influence on my uncle, and uh, he just said, when I was elected, you're going to love working with Lisa. She is one of the classiest ladies because she takes after her mom, so that's his... A remarkable thing and if I were 20 years older I think Mr. Adams would have a run for his money. <laughs> I'm just kidding Lisa, I, I, I really do love you, you're a wonderful woman and you've, you've served Salt Lake City extremely well and, and the residents of District 7, I'll never forget you going door to door, I mean that was uh, when we announced the Homeless Resource Centers and what you did there was just you know unfathomable that you were able to do that so you know you represented the District 7 extremely well. And uh, Stan, uh, he's always been like that father figure, the role that we've had on the council. You hear a teddy bear. He really is. Um, Carlton Christensen, I thought, was hoping you were going to try and go for 16 years and try and beat his record. But, uh, you know, Carlton told me one thing uh, when I was elected. He goes, it's not about you. It's really about the chair and, and the people you represent. And you have upheld that stand to the utmost. Uh, your example to me and how you carry yourself uh, you talked me off several ledges while I was chair, uh, which I needed because I was ready to go off of it. Um, you know, your ability just to bring things around full circle, understand the big picture uh, is, is really what it's all about. You know, as a council, I feel like that's what we've been able to accomplish, and that's because of the good leadership that we've, we've had with you two individuals. Is It's not about the, the reactionary stuff. It's the bigger picture items. And I am just extremely grateful for that, and we're going to... We're going to miss you here on the council. I expect to see texts um, 
throughout the, the meeting saying, hey, what about this? What about that? Don't forget about this. There's money under the pocket. Here, James, you got to send those my way, Stan. We don't have anyone who knows all those little hidden places anymore. Um, so I just really appreciate your, both of your leadership and your friendship. And, uh, you know, Salt Lake City, this better not be the end of, of elected uh, officials for, for you, Stan and Lisa, when you get back. So I just really appreciate you both and what you've meant to me in my life. Okay, so thank you all. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn the time back to Council uh, Chair Penfold to finish conducting the remaining council business for the evening. I just want to take a minute to thank family, friends, acquaintances, those who are here. Um, for Lisa and I, we so appreciate your attendance this evening. You're welcome to stay for the rest of our official meeting. It is not necessary in any fashion, nor is it expected. Um, we just want to share our gratitude in having you with us here this evening. Um, thank you all so much. We'll just take a little pause for those who want to leave. It's okay. We won't watch you walk out. And council members, I would like to bring your attention to the agenda. We are on section B. Uh, we have one public hearing this evening. It's a grant application for 2017 State of Utah Alcohol and Drug Free Committee uh, DUI enforcement equipment. Uh, do we have anyone here to speak to this public hearing? William, are you here to speak to this particular issue? summarize what this is about? Um, William, this is a grant application that the city is considering um, to the State of Utah Alcohol and Drug Free Committee, and it would provide equipment uh, for DUI enforcement to the police department. Oh, um, so DUI enforcement? Yes. Okay. Um, I thought it was something else. Anyways, um, I think if we're going to fund this side of the, the program, well, we should also try to focus on um, ways in which we can uh, make it available for people to go home uh, without uh, costs on them. Um, there's plenty of uh, San Francisco and other cities set up similar avenues in which you can call and get a free ride home. Um, we should, uh, should promote efforts along those lines uh, to prevent uh, DUI and basically make it so there's no excuse to drive home drunk as well as the enforcement of the law it is important to give people avenues that they can secure their vehicle to make sure that they're not going to lose anything and as well as get a, a secure ride home so that way they don't have to feel scared if they're drunk at night worrying about their vehicle at that time. <laughs> Thank you, William. Are there any additional comments to this specific grant application? If not, I would consider a motion. Mr. Chair, I move the council close, close this public hearing and refer this grant item to a future meeting for action. Second. There's a motion by Council Member Mendenhall and a second by Council Member Adams to close the hearing and defer action. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much. We are on to item um, section C, item one, potential action items. This is an ordinance uh, for Salt Lake City housing plan. I'll uh, look Mr. to Chair. Council Member Mendenhall. Mendenhall. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Luke. I move the council approve an ordinance adopting growing SLC, a five-year housing plan with the following changes. One that the City Council's guiding principles for evaluating and appropriating city funds on housing developments be inserted into the housing plan as Chapter 2 to inform and provide guidance to city officials, the community, developers, and all other interested parties of the Council's criteria that will be considered as they weigh requests for city funding, and that the changes approved by the City Council as outlined in Attachment B be included in the final draft of the housing plan, and the following update replaced the accessory dwelling unit language for section 1.1.3 of the housing plan on page 18 
which should read, revise the accessory dwelling unit ordinance to expand its application and develop measures to promote its use. Accessory dwelling units, or ADUs, will contribute to creating a range of housing options. These units, typically 500 to 600 square feet in size, fit on existing properties, usually behind single-family homes. The production cost of these small, on these small, relatively ex inexpensive units is reduced because the price of land is removed from the equation. This model also allows for households to accommodate their changing family needs, perhaps housing a student or aging parent. The city will explore and make recommendations on clear internal processes and potential building plans. The revised ordinance should expand the use of ADUs and create design and approval standards that ensures an ADU integrates within the neighborhood and that the following clause be included as a quote whereas clause in the adopting ordinance whereas the city council has established guiding principles for evaluating and appropriating city funds on housing developments and included those in the growing Salt Lake plan. The city council intends to both measure the success of the city's housing efforts and to appropriate funds consistent with those guiding principles. Second. We have a motion by Council Member Mendenhall and a second by Council Member Kitchen. Any discussion to the motion? Yes, Erin. I want to thank the mayor and her administration for bringing us this housing plan. It couldn't have come at a better time. It was a great deal of effort. Uh, Hand has done a wonderful job of creating the plan and then working with the council through so many briefings we can't even count really to uh, accommodate our priorities and our policy requests in here. Uh, I can't wait to get to work on this and to start spending more of the money that we've set aside on affordable housing. Thank you, Councilmember Kitchen. Yeah, I'd just like to applaud uh, Mike Ackerlow, Melissa Jensen, and Sean Murphy for the great work that you all have done on this. It's been a heavy, heavy lift, um, and there's mo a lot more work policy-wise to do from this point of from this position, but I think this is a great starting point and now we have a great roadmap. So thank you for all the work you've done. Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you. And Councilmember Adams. I also want to acknowledge Matt Dahl, who's no longer with the city, but who really did a ton of work on putting this plan together. I think it's really exciting that we're at the point of adopting it. Thank you. Any other discussion to the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? That motion uh, carries and it is unanimous. We now have a, an, an official Salt Lake City housing plan, current. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we are now on to item D1, um, comments. I know a lot of people are here to make comments this evening. I'll remind you of our um, process for comments um, to please be respectful. You'll be provided with two minutes. And if you'd like to speak to us during this period, uh, please fill out a comment card so that we can put you in the lineup uh, to call your name to come up forward. And if you haven't filled out a card, if you'd raise your hand and a council member, or excuse me, a staff member can get you a card to fill out. We'll start this section with questions uh, to the mayor from the city council. And uh, Patrick's joined us. I know the mayor stepped out for an event. Uh, any questions to the mayor? representative okay thank you thanks uh, Patrick uh, we are now on to our section comments to the City Council I know that there are several people who would like to comment before us I will call out um, I'll call out a name and I'll call up uh, <laughs> a, a batters up um, so that you can be prepared to come up and speak. Uh, our first uh, speaker will be Douglas Cotant, and our second will be Lex Scott. First of all, I want to say that the building inspector called me this morning, and he's going to try and... Uh, work things out. And I got an email last night and some and this morning about uh, from Owen Smith and I'm not sure what the, what they want me to do. So I'll leave it up in the air for now. Secondly, Lisa Uh, 
I'm going to miss you. And it has been a great privilege. It has been a great pur privilege to know you, and I want to I want to continue being your friend. May I? And uh, I was going to. I was going, going to complain that this meeting is too long, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, well, thank you for your service on the city council, and thank you for helping me, helping me with some of the problems that I've had. And, again. I will miss you. Point of personal privilege. Certainly, Councilmember Adams. Thank you so much, Douglas, and thank you for your friendship. And thank you for having me over on Thanksgiving of 2015. Thank you, Douglas. Lex Scott, who will be followed by Amir. Cornell. Lex Scott. Amir Cornell, uh, followed by William Galloway again. Is Amir, has Amir stepped out? William Galloway, followed by Bernie Hart. So I was uh, here last time, uh, uh, last time my friends were here as well. And I think uh, the main thing that's being pushed forward, which is the 50 additional cops um, to the Rio Grande area, highlights exactly what I stated before, that this is simply bringing more sticks to a fire. Um, that's all it's going to do. It doesn't address the, the need for water or healing of the wounds of the people who live there. Um, if the state is going to provide us aid in this, then we need to say this is where we want to direct the aid towards, is towards doctors to help people overcome uh, the situation they're in. It's difficult for people who haven't been in the workforce for a very long time to get back into it. It's difficult for them to get situated with homes and housing and deal with that kind of a change in their life. And the fact is we, want when we're going to have police coming now a 24-hour body cam release policy which includes the mayor can also instill this policy because if we're going to add more police they're going to be more likelihood of people like Patrick Harmon people who are homeless who will get shot as they're running away well, I watched the footage and I slowed it down very carefully to make sure what had transpired. The cop has said, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to fucking shoot you. And as he was swearing at the guy, he started to pull the trigger. He was not giving the guy enough time to respond to the order. He was not tackling an individual who posed no threat. He simply was going to execute the individual as he was running away. Even if he somehow had a weapon, the officers have guns to shoot him down. Time. There's no threat he posed. And I think we need to consider this if we're going to have more cops here. Thank you, William. Bernie Hart, uh, followed by David Newland. Utah is many things. And one of the things it is, it's one of you know the high rates of autism, uh, lead a lot of leadership roles in the country, high rates of teen suicide, a number of things, prescription drug overdoses, you know, it has its unique qualities. But one of them also is that it's been, through polling, it's been shown to be one of the most religious states in the country. And I'm having trouble or a problem 
bringing that together with what I hear on a daily basis within the homeless community about how they are treated by officialdom and our leaders in Salt Lake City and Salt Lake County. I struggle with the idea of compassion and caring and all the things that that religious leadership is supposed to signify in, in our community. And it came to a head last week when it was brought to my attention again, once again, that our police are arresting people and taking them to jail and holding them in jail until the middle of the night and releasing them from jail at one or two o'clock in the morning when there is no transportation available, there is no way to get back to their, wherever they come from out of the city. They often may not have money, uh, they may be addicted, they may be suffering a lot of problems, and they are on the street and outside the prison or the county jail at two o'clock in the morning. Last week, I heard about a gentleman that was there waiting and decided to spend the night, went outside to have a cigarette, when, and it was a cold night, went to go back inside, and they wouldn't let him back in. They said, you can't come back in, no room here, or Time. no, not real room, but. Then I heard of another gentleman that was also let out at two o'clock in the morning on a very cold night and he couldn't really get back to the city and he discovered something. He discovered that the, on the sidewalks where they have snow melting equipment and they don't have to, so they have to shovel the sidewalks, the sidewalks are a little warmer than the surrounding air, the air outside. Bernie, the, So he uh, has discovered. Bernie, your time's up, could you wrap it doesn't up? Doesn't bother me. Uh, You'll could, just wait for me, please. No, you. your time is up, Bernie, and, and everyone has the same amount I'm of time, done, Bernie. Until this problem is solved, Bernie, Bernie, I'll come back. Uh, and please, no he applause. He lays out on the Bernie, sidewalk with Bernie, his cheek time and is his up. body on the sidewalk to stay warm enough. Bernie, I don't want to have to ask next, you to step down again. You can ask so. me anything you would like. Bernie, please, um, I have a lot of respect they for you and your comments. They on the sidewalk to stay warm until the morning comes Bernie, because the, jail, the city Bernie, does your not time have is transportation up. back into Bernie, the city. Bernie, your time and is up. And this is the people we are supposed to be caring about and doing Could I have uh, someone help Bernie uh, find his way out the door? And Bernie, I welcome your comments in other formats. You can send us an email. You can send us a letter. You can communicate with us Nobody individually after the meeting. Nobody seems to be listening. Bernie, your time is up. Please take a seat, or I'll have to ask you to be uh, escorted out the room. It's up to you. Could you please ask uh, help uh, Bernie find his way out? Bernie, I'm really sorry. Um, everyone gets two minutes. I'm sorry. You're just doing what you have to do. I do what I have to do. Hey, thank you. If you could step aside for the next speaker, please. Bernie, could you step aside for the next speaker, please? Um, I tell you what, council members, we're going to take a break, um, and we're going to let uh, Bernie compose himself and remove himself from the I podium. Never so, speakers, if you could step aside uh, <laughs> uh, to the other room, we're just going to take a quick break. <laughs> Come. Compassion, compassion.
We'll reconvene. Um, audience, I just truly want to remind you that um, our rules are here because we feel like it's really important to hear from all of you. And um, we have a lot of cards to get through this evening. And um, we provide many opportunities to communicate with the council and with the mayor's office. Uh, always encourage you to take advantage of writing or email or phone calls, and we see those. Um, so our, as a reminder, we provide two minutes for public comment. We will give it, have a timer, and uh, we'll ask you to conclude your comments at the end of those two minutes, and we sincerely do want to hear from everyone. Uh, David Newland is next up, and Cristobal, is it Vegas? Vegas is after David. David's gone. Uh, Cristobal Vallegas, followed by uh, by Victoria. Uh, I'm sorry, Victoria. I don't have your last name. All right. Go ahead. Well, first of all, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity. To, you know, keep going and speak. Uh, thanks so much for your service. Uh, um, it's really great to have, you know, two council members that have done really great things in, for the city. Um, and also, thank you so much for approving the housing plan. That's a really great step. Um, I had the privilege to work with uh, The Road Home for about a year. Um, I unfortunately left, and one of the factors was because of the over-policing of that area. Me as a brown body entering that space just to work and serve people who are in the most dire circumstances was something especially gruesome, both from a mental and health state. I expressed this already to Mayor Biscupsi at the Homelessness Summit, um, and although it was kind of confrontational, I hope she did understand what I meant, that over-policing of staff, particularly brown bodies, is very upsetting. Um, one thing, more police does not equal less crime. We've seen that in stats across the nation. More police equal more resentment, particularly in racial, social, economic, and political um, anger. More police won't be uh, proportionally sent throughout the, the Salt Lake City. They'll be focused on where crime is expected to be. And unfortunately, lots of that times by, as we all know, white city governments are toward uh, minority populations where they're expected to be more crime. Just like, just like the ordinance regarding the mother-in-law apartment, some of us want a tale of two solid cities, east, west, rich, poor, housed, not housed, Policed, not policed. We were all so quick to approve 50 police officers, yet it took us a long time to just approve 50 rehab beds. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Victoria um, Sethunia, is that correct? Victoria, please correct me when you come I up. I correctly, but that's okay. Could you correct <laughs> it for me, please? Oh, with a small fee, yes. It's Setunia. Thank you. Um, I have three questions, and three of them pertain to the Rio Grande operation. The first question is, is uh, Salt Lake City um, a sanctuary city? And if it is, why is it that immigrants who were arrested at that location during the operation were turned into ICE? Second question. When the decision was made to arrest the residents at Rio Grande, was anybody aware that some of the arrestees were patients, some of them victims of medical malpractice, which is at issue with our national opioid crisis? And if, if somebody was aware, when the patients there at that resident were arrested, where were the handcuffs for the medical practitioners? And the last question. From what I heard, the state will be filing lawsuit uh, against Big Pharma. My question pertains to the immigrants. Those who have already been deported, how will they benefit from that action? 
as far as Big Pharma perhaps providing treatment. And um, a second subsidiary question to that is, for immigrants facing deportation while they are in fact uh, a community in the opioid crisis, how will they be granted um, treatment under that, um, under that uh, government action? Thank you. Victoria, before you leave this evening, would you connect with one of our staff members over there? Because I think we can provide you some response to some of those questions. So would you just con connect with them before you leave this evening? Oh, OK. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy Cromer, uh, followed by um, Adam McGaman. My name is Cindy Cromer. I was going to try to make a deal borrowing against a future comment for a few more seconds tonight, but I'll just talk really fast and I'll stop when I get beeped. Since the inception of the council form of government, I've worked with members of the Salt Lake City Council. I don't see the wall of their photographs in alphabetical order across the hall. I see the images in groups of seven and I think of them as constellations. There have been previous productive constellations of this council. There have also been flickering stars, shooting stars, and black holes in terms of my time. This council has been an outstanding constellation, shining light on some of Salt Lake's most recalcitrant problems. It is with galactic sadness that I am saying farewell to two stars tonight. I don't recall a time ever that the chair of the council and the chair of the RDA departed at the same time. Both council member Stan Penfold and council member Lisa Adams will continue to shine as they move into their new orbits. First, a toast to Stan, whom I've known for 30 years. Some elected officials have given me frown lines. Stan has left me with laugh lines to remember his eight years of service. His self-deprecating humor can put the most nervous citizen at ease. He has partnered with his dog to raise more money for worthy causes than I ever have. I marvel at his ability to navigate in political traffic, heavy political traffic. You may know that his degree is in horticulture, which I think is why he's always aware of the entire landscape. He is a bit like a garden gnome, philosophically surveying the terrain. While I've known Stan for three decades, I've only met Lisa when she joined the council. I didn't take notice of her bright star until I recognized that she was repeatedly taking responsibilities for problems that she did not create. Never one to whine. She forges ahead to get the job done. The issue resolved, the problem abated. She was fearless in that detour known as the location of the homeless resource centers. I will stop and send everything else to you electronically. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Adam Gaiman, followed by James Berenson. It's Adam Gaiman. Thank you, Thank and, you Adam. Uh, I was going to say one thing is the fact that the city, the mayor, all of you as council members are willing to forego uh, accessibility for the fact that I just tried the, the other day take the jingle bus and it is not wheelchair accessible. I've actually mentioned that multiple times, but at the same time uh, for years, and at the same time, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, you guys are willing to spend more money to put 50 more cops on the streets that are, that's 50 more chances of getting murdered by the hands of a cop because most cops are scared of everyone that they come in contact with. They must not have good enough training, but yet you guys are willing to skimp on that and not care about, but yet you're willing to spend money for cops when there's already problems. You know, I don't get why you guys are willing to do that, but you guys aren't listening to us and even this other issue, other issues are not even being taken care of. Uh, during the winter time, you guys don't make sure that sidewalks, curb cuts and pathways crosswalks and that are clear to snow, but yet you guys expect people with disabilities to get, a, get out and get a job, but yet when they try to get out, they can't get out. There's a lot of things that you guys are not willing to do. And every meeting I've been to, you guys have always said something about how you guys are gonna just pass it on to some other committee and you don't take care of it during the meeting itself and actually make a decision. And to you guys, the mayor and the police department are willing to do something if you guys aren't willing to do anything, then I'm not going to call 911 for any of you guys, the mayor, or any cop next time they're laying on the side of the street. And you need your voice heard. You need to listen to we the people. That is what this whole country is based off of. And that's how, I, that's how I'm going to take a knee. 
Thank you, Adam. James Berenson, followed by Jacob Jensen. It's come to my own, oh, sorry. Greeting, comrades. Thank you for me letting me dress the Politburo. Where's Mrs. Chairman at? Busy brown nosing, trying to raise money for her reelection. Speaking of the mayor, I remember during, when she was running, she said she was gonna help the homeless. Yet, what has she done? She's closed the road home. She has uh, seized assets illegally without due process of the law. You care to comment on that, Poindexter? Uh, yeah, but what, what has she really done to help the homeless? I, I, I don't know. Maybe you intellectuals can enlighten me on to what she's done, or should I go ask someone over there that blows me off? I've still been waiting since August for the court case that sits there in a, your rules violate the Constitution. They're not valid. It violates the Constitution. The Constitution is the law of the land. Two minutes Unless I've, I've asked you guys this question before, but you're tyrants of your own little fiefdoms, right, Mr. Goldman Sachs? See that? Dina Powell got let go of the White House. Goldman Sachs takes another bullet, huh? But you know, these things, the two-tiered justice system, the mayor can, can waste money, spend money. I need two bodyguards. What about people on the street? Can't even eat a can of fucking beans. How some, some a couple, of, a couple of other people coming over trying to steal their beans. Where's my fucking bodyguard? Where's my chauffeur? I, I don't understand how you guys waste this money like you do. And you want to raise taxes? I say good, good riddance to the old trash, the old rubbish. I've come to all these meetings and it's just one uniform body saying, oh yeah, oppress the poor. You, you forget, like that gentleman said, you're supposed to work for us. We're your boss, not the other way around. I remember the times that the tax increases would go on a ballot. Do you know what that is besides election times? It was up to the people to decide if they wanted to pay more money. But you're tyrants in your own little fiefdoms, so it really doesn't matter. Mr. Luke, he goes to Goldman Sachs and they give him attaboys. Time. I'm illiterate, so I don't comprehend that uh, amendment there, whatever you just said. But anyway, where, 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 where does all this uh, corruption end? Time. The time? Thank you, it James. It is uh, not 8.55. There you go. Thank you, James. Why are you thanking me? I'm not done. Uh, your time is up. Do you have a thought yeah, to Yeah, but see, that's what you see. You don't even listen. Do you have a letter from God allowing you to see, supersede our God-given rights to limit our freedom of speech? Do you have that document on you? James. Come on, here we go again. Here we go again. I'm sorry your time's up. My we, time is we not We have up. other people that You're, want to the speak. The rules that violate the Constitution are not valid. James, we have other I've been people. asking since August for that court case. We have other people who want to speak. Please. And they can take as much time as they want to because this is the land of the free please and the home of the brave. Please surrender the microphone, James. Do uh, what? Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Uh, your time's up. No, it's not. Yeah, it, it is. Je I'm uh, not going to have this, this argument with you. You sit up there on your, on your high rise looking down at us poor plebs that you use to fund your stupid, idiotic plans. James, uh, time's up. Thank you. Well, good for you. I'm going to keep talking. You know, that, that church down, downtown, there's a Japanese church and there's a Buddhist temple. Um, Establishment politicians like Mr. Luke want to take uh, those escort churches. Could we please escort James out? Thank wanna you. Want to remove those churches James. for high rise establishment buildings. What about those churches? James. I don't need that. I James. Can do my own talk. James, we have other speakers. Um, could we please escort uh, James out? Um, you guys ain't no better than us. You work for us. Could we please escort you James work for out? Us. Could we please? When are you going to do your damn job? Can we please escort James out? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, put hands on me. See what happens. I will um, defend myself. Okay. When are they respectful? You're protecting, sir. They are violating the Constitution. They are violating the Constitution. They won't give me the case. You, you might start arresting these criminals. I know because it's a two-tier justice system. I, I, I break the law, I go to fucking jail. They break the law and, they, and they're, they're excluded onto the top tier. Oh, here we go again. You don't want to chat with me. You guys just throw me off, treat me like last week's trash. 
You haven't given it to me. You give me regulations. A regulation is not a court case. If these, if these Vlad Happies want to spend so much time patting themselves on the back for the tremendous job they've done, then there'd be more time, wouldn't there? Go ahead, establishment, cocksuckers. Jacob Jensen, followed by Dave Iltis. I promise I won't do that much name calling. Um, so, um, I'm here with my comrades, my friends, and other community members to beg you for the 24 hour body cam release policy. What we have right now is terribly ambiguous. They want 50 new officers to protect the public, but we need the ability to protect ourselves from the police. Nothing else seems to work unless we catch their hand in the cookie jar with body cam footage or some other type of footage. It seems to be the only check. The police, the police can't seem to police themselves. The mayor doesn't want to do it, the DA refuses to do it, and the only way that we seem to even get the possibility of justice is if we get body cam footage. I believe it's a deliberate strategy to delay it as much as possible because the more time that's able to pass, the greater that people are gonna be distracted or too busy or the police are gonna be able to groom the message. We, we don't want it, okay? We need the ability to police the police. The community needs the ability to do that. The CRB does not have the power to do it. They haven't done it. Even when they make recommendations, it doesn't happen. The only thing that seems to matter is when they get caught on camera. I'm asking you to pass the ordinance. That's it. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, Dave Iltis, followed by Soren Simonson. Soren's the last card I have. So if there's a, or others who would like to speak, please raise your hand and fill out a card. Hi, um, just wanted to say thank you very much to uh, Lisa Adams and Stan Penfold. Um, both of you uh, have listened, um, sometimes when I disagree with you, sometimes when I agree with you, uh, and thank you both for serving the city very well. Um, Stan, thank you for serving our neighborhood, the avenues, and for being a good friend over the years. I, we, I really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to address the council briefly and the mayor um, and Patrick Leary on streetlights. Um, I've been working for the last six or eight months trying to get some decent answers out of public utilities. And there's been really almost no progress on that front. And the city's moving forward replacing streetlights with LED streetlights, and that's a good thing in terms of energy efficiency, but they're using five-year-old outdated standards. Uh, the lights are too bright, they're the wrong color temperature, they're damaging to wildlife, they're bad for dark skies initiatives, and they aren't as energy efficient as they could be if we chose proper and up-to-date um, color standards and color temperature and lumen output. Um, despite meeting with public utilities and getting information from them, they've only committed to looking at this sometime um, in the next year with no, uh, no, no indication that they're actually gonna do anything whatsoever. Uh, the solution is simple. You call up the, the light supply companies. They have the current standard bulbs of 3000K and uh, 1800 lumens or so, but Public Utilities has been entirely unwilling to do anything on this, and it's extremely frustrating. Um, and I've been getting stonewalled, and I'm asking that the council uh, and Patrick Leary please accelerate this process uh, so that we have better health for our city. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Soren Simonson followed. I understand David Newland's back. So, David. 
Thank you, council members, for adopting the housing plan this evening. A very, very important and significant piece of public policy. Um, I, I know it's been a very long and deliberative process to adopt it. I hope its implementation is very rapid. As I ride Party's Trail and the Jordan River Parkway from my home in Sugar House to my office in District 1 each day, um, I see the evidence of affordable housing um, crisis. People camped along those corridors that are gems in our city that should not be living on the streets. Um, so I hope that uh, we're not two years to implement the, the programs of that policy. I hope you'll advocate of the administration, and I know the administration's listening as well, to implement that. I would love to see an inclusionary zoning policy in front of you in a few weeks. Would love to see ADUs adopted citywide. We desperately need them in our neighborhood. I know there are people that oppose them, but they are desperately needed in our neighborhood. We need inclusionary housing in our neighborhood. We have people working jobs that need affordable housing in our neighborhood. Um, so I hope you'll move very quickly on those, and when they're in front of you, don't spend weeks deliberating them or months deliberating them. I hope you'll adopt them very quickly. Uh, thank you for adopting the transit master plan. Again, let's make that happen. Uh, Charlie Luke was so kind to drive me home frequently after council meetings. I've got my bike tonight because transit's not running to my neighborhood any longer, and I'll be biking home in this pea soup that we're breathing every day. But um, I hope we can adopt or develop and implement that plan very quickly as well. Uh, with whatever time I have remaining, I want to just say thank you to Lisa and Stan. Um, I didn't have the pleasure to serve with Lisa. Um, you've done an admirable job um, uh, taking the reins of District 7. Thank you. Stan, it was truly an honor working with you. I've uh, appreciated your continued a very deliberate service. And all of you on the council, thank you for your service. I know that there uh, are challenges to it, but it's essential work to the progress of our city and Time. keep up the good work. Keep progressing. Thank you. Thank you, Soren. David Newland, followed by Will Griffith. Thank you very much. Um, I'm here to speak in favor of a 24-hour body camera policy. Um, but before I do that, I just want to mention um, the mayor earlier uh, pointed out that you have passed um, or adopted um, the most comprehensive ho uh, affordable housing policy in the last 20 years. Um, and this was offered as sort of praise, right, as a sort of accomplishment. And I heard it, and what I thought was what a tremendous failure that in 20 years, 20 years, we have not adopted a reasonable affordable housing policy, leading directly to the situation in the Rio Grande, leading directly to increased policing, increased police brutality, increased police arrests, right? Like, this body has failed for 20 years to adopt a reasonable policy on affordable housing, and here we are, right? Um, and I think this ties directly into why I would like a 24-hour body camera policy. Um, I think it's uh, pretty clear that there's a connection between what's happening in uh, the Rio Grande area and this request for 50 new police officers because people want to feel safe uh, as a result of the horribly mismanaged policy in that area uh, so far, right? Um, and to, uh, to hire 50 new police officers without taking even one single step uh, toward increased accountability and increased transparency um, for a police department that literally has murdered people, harassed people, illegally arrested people, and sicked dogs on citizens of this state is just like beyond belief to me, right? All that we are asking, all that the people are asking right now is one simple step. We've definitely got a comprehensive policy and you'll hear about it in the future because we're still gonna fight for it. But right now what we want is one single step towards accountability and towards transparency. And that first step is adopting a 24 hour body camera policy. That leads to transparency and that can lead to a second step towards accountability on the part of the police. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Uh, Will Griffith followed by Billy Palmer. Hello. I, uh, I was planning on only observing tonight, but after watching what transpired, I felt necessary to come up and speak. It, is, it, was, it was mentioned earlier uh, that, that this sort of forum is the sort of thing that, that democracy thrives in. Well, what I saw was I saw an articulate, nice, composed old man 
walked out on by an entire city council because they didn't want to listen to what he had to say, because they wanted to go, they were more concerned with formal procedure than they were to listening to one of their constituents. And that's wrong. And Mr. Penhold, Penfold, sorry, I hope that's how you, uh, wanted, uh, how you wanted to be remembered when you retired. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Billy Palmer. Um, I just wanted to come here uh, as uh, the president of, uh, of the board of directors of NeighborWorks and thank you uh, for adopting a comprehensive housing policy. Uh, I know I've had a lot of conversations with uh, most of you about uh, housing, the need for mixed income, uh, the nuances in housing, the need to be really thoughtful on neighborhoods of choice, and I think that uh, the hard work done by the mayor and her staff and the consideration uh, by your entire council is um, um, admirable, and I really uh, want to say that we appreciate it. We look forward to partnering with the city in trying to uh, help create those neighborhoods of choice. I would also want to say, um, Stan, we're going to miss you, and Lisa, while we don't know each other very well, um, you did, you've done a great job in your, in your interim. And uh, Stan, gonna miss you, uh, but I know that you'll be working hard um, in, in the community, and uh, we look forward to the next, the next step you'll take. But uh, that's it, thank you. Thank you, Billy. That concludes our public comment uh, section this evening. We'll be moving on to item E, which is new business. We have uh, a resolution uh, concerning West Capitol Street closure and deadline extension. I'd be entertain a motion to. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I move the council adopt a resolution extending the time period for satisfying conditions set forth in ordinance number 56 of 2016 by two years to December 16, 2019. Second. second. We have a motion by council member Adams and a second by council member Luke. Any discussion to the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries its unanimous. We'll be moving on to item, uh, excuse me, actually item number F1 is being postponed to a future date. Um, item number F2 is a resolution concerning a public benefits analysis of a city fee, uh, fee waiver for the new public health center. I think there are two options for motions Mr. Before, Chair? Uh, before you, yes. Uh, if I can find it. <laughs> um, I, I move that the City Council decline the request to waive permit fees for the new public health center on the basis that the city and county have a long established process for cost allocation to cover each entity's costs and to avoid confusion for taxpayers and other permit applicants. Second. We have a motion in a, uh, by Council Member Adams and a second by who did the chart? Uh, uh, by Council Member uh, Kitchen. Any discussion to the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries and that is unanimous. We are now on to our consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I move the consent agenda. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you all very much. That concludes our uh, council meeting for this evening.